Stream train. Stream train. Stream train. Stream train. Stream train. We're streaming. We're streaming. Oh, streaming. <laughs> we are. <Hi. laughs> Hello. Welcome to the Droppy stream. Where well, we, we never do that. We stream on Twitch. <laughs> What? All of his headbutting me, y'all. Do you see they this? They said we wouldn't. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah, she is doing a lot of headbutting right it's now. It's so cute. You know why she's doing it? It's because she's excited about the Droppy Q&A stream we're about to do. Yeah. yeah. We're going to... Nathan, don't look behind you, but a ghost just walked through. That was so scary. That was uh, just apparition. Emily. That was incredible. Emily's, an apparition. Emily's not a ghost. She's Emily's alive. Emily's an apparition. What? Oh, she's making ghosts. <laughs> We're going to watch the footage back and like zoom in on her and put a red circle and be like, if you look closely in the background. Rafi haunted? Thumbnail. Oh, thumbnail for the stream. I'm not going to remember that. We were just talking in Discord about how we should never say we're going to do things on episodes or streams Unless. because we, we immediately forget. Yes, we do. Um... Thank you everyone for compliments about my hair who hasn't seen it. And thank you for everyone who's complimenting Julia's brand new glasses. I got new glasses. Yeah. She looks so yeah. cool. I can't help but think of glasses in the way that I, okay, story time. I went to go do. <laughs> Not clickbait. I went to go do um, career day at my brother's school because my brother is a teacher, much like the rest of my family, it seems. Mm -hmm. And, um, we were in the hallway talking to the security officer and this one boy is literally skipping down the hallway. It was very cute. And then he sees my brother, the security officer and I, and does that thing of like where he stops mid skip and just goes. And then he walks like very normally, but like stiffly. Then he walks over pretending like he wasn't just skipping and he comes over and he goes over to the security guard and goes, have you seen my uh, glasses? And the security officer was like, they're on your shirt. Oh, okay. Eh. And then he walked back. He just said glasses <laughs> as glasses. Glasses. Have you seen my glasses? G glasses. <laughs> so now everyone has seen your glasses. Everyone yeah. has seen my glasses. And that is important, I think. Wow. Wow. And then he proceeded to mispronounce the security officer's name, even though it was the same as his last name. And it was, what? It was a very confusing exchange. What is this what? story? <laughs> this is a the story Who has no, no end and no beginning. He just said glasses weird. <laughs> I had one encounter with this child, and it was the best. He was skipping. Yeah, he was skipping camp. He was skipping glasses. <laughs> Sometimes you just can't say a word. Yeah. The last. I got called the out last. on anime history by way more people than I thought I would because I kept saying water. Like I said it like five times in water. a row. <laughs> Is Wait, that water. like a Texas thing? Wait, what? I don't know. What's weird about it? It sounds normal to me. Water. Water. What? Water? Water. It sounds the water. same. Like you a. Didn't say, you didn't say water. That's like the Baltimore. I guess there's a slight where, where like I come W. From, people U. say water and and milk. I mean, uh, where I come from, people I say water. 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 Milk. Water. I guess it's like there's a, a <laughs> W U. I don't know. My grandmother's from Texas, and she says water. 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 She loves to add an R. Yeah. So I don't Warshing. know. I think all ways of saying Warshing. it are equally valid. Lasagna. Lasagna. I think the word I actually say weird is pillow. Yeah, that, pillow. that's got an E sound for sure. Pillow. <laughs> yeah, that Jacob one has, I know I say weird. Jacob has it's this part accent of my thing. charm, though. <laughs> <laughs> or he says pen. Uh, no, tin and ten are the same. Yeah. Which apparently in, is a, in, in Georgia, Georgia, the E and the E and the I <laughs> sound in the middle vowel slot there, it sounds exactly the same. It's all just ten, yeah. ten, ten, pen, <laughs> pen. It's the same. There's only one way to say it. And it took me a really long time to even be able to hear the difference when people tried to like show me. Yeah, he asked me about the draw detectives pen, and I was like, 
I don't know what you're talking about. I have to be like pin. Yeah, I, pin. I remember, yeah, I remember the, like the first time <laughs> I ever heard you talk about enamel enamel pins. I was like, what are enamel pins? <laughs> it's the hot new thing. To me, it sounds so normal. It's like, uh, whatever. People uh, need to chill. Are, yeah. <laughs> It's like, I don't. I don't care. I don't know what fine. my accent is anymore. <laughs> I was just. Fine. I was just like, why is everyone pointing it out? And I just. It was because I said water like four water. times in one sentence. <laughs> and I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> I have like. New I just, York-ish. I'm still not hearing what's wrong about like. <laughs> it sounds water. normal to me. Water, water versus water. water. Yeah. Water? I hear it, but it's like. What, wait, what's only the correct I'm focusing. way? Water. <laughs> Water. water, water, water. We can't keep talking about this. We're doing a Q and A stream. <laughs> this is part of it. This that is was not... the first Q. How do y'all say water? <laughs> that not question comes to us from Karina. <laughs> Unbelievable. I would love it if people in chat would start asking some questions. And maybe Nathan, if you want to pull up a canvas or something, you can start uh, now. Now, Jacob. Okay. Now, okay, Jacob. listen, before you say anything, I don't, yeah, why I, don't you I, I, try I, again? I've done okay. a magic trick. Is Jacob okay. gatekeeping the screen share again? <laughs> I've done a magic trick. Hey. This is my this is my uh, casual chatting, answering some <laughs> questions mug. This is a mug that has answers. This mug <laughs> is going to give you answers whether you want them or not. <laughs> yeah. Our first question is for Nathan. Nathan, how long have you been haunted by the ghost in your apartment? <laughs> That's mean, not a question. That's a question. No one asked it. <laughs> it was. Oh. It was down. It was. You scrolled down. It was there. I want to so, ask a real question. A real we question. are professional artists, so we can I I think, answer questions. I think the, the nature of haunting is that I, it's sort of outside of time, and I don't really, I don't really know. Like there the, we go. The, the amount of time I've been aware of the haunting is not the same as the thank you, Nathan. Amount of time of the haunting, so. I feel like it's one of those streams where everyone is going to foil me at every turn. <laughs> it has to me. hire some sort of a, a necromancer or medium of some sort to like <laughs> assess how long my apartment's been haunted. Uh, a, I'm going to ask a, a real question, if that's okay. Okay. So if anybody has any recommendations of uh, a oh medium, my God, be able to Nathan, <laughs> stop your sentence. <laughs> End it. Is it done? Yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> okay. Here's a question. A real question. Mm-hmm. Uh, Delta B. Huey said, hey, question. I'm in life drawing in college, and no matter what I do, I manage to have my work look like a child drew it. I'm somehow the worst in the class, and I don't feel like I'm improving. How do you all fix it, or is it possible that I just can't draw? I'm starting to have that fear. That's impossible. Everyone can draw. Everyone can draw. First of all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do we have any advice for if you feel like you're not improving as fast as you as you want to be? I feel like a, a suggestion, because this is something that I've been thinking about for myself, because I keep having the same worry as someone who is a professional artist. But I feel like something that I've been trying to do is to focus on one aspect. I feel like if you spread yourself out too much and you're trying to cover like, I want to draw all of the human body perfectly from one go, you're going to get overwhelmed. And it's you're trying to tackle so many things that like you're covering a lot, but it's going to seem like a little bit, but because your range is so wide. So like maybe focus on one aspect at a time. Focus on getting the proportions of the face correct. You know, just keep practicing one part over and over again. Measure, keep measuring, and then get to a place where you feel like you kind of know how that shape works. And then, like, break it down also into shapes and and stuff and so that it's a little bit easier and so that you remember how to do it. Um, Also, what the heck? Also... Um, then, you know, when you feel like you're comfortable with a place, then move on to another aspect like hands. Hands are really hard, you know, break that down. Anyway, that's my advice. Break it down. Break it down. Break it down. Can I get a drawing yeah. suggestion as well? Yeah, give a drawing suggestion questions. to Nathan, but I think Julia's pretty spot on with what I would have recommended as well. 
Break the which is to just down. take it one one sort of thing at a time. Um, it's really easy to look at like, you know, work that's like at a higher level than yours and see like the full piece and be like, I need to be able to do all of that. And uh, it's in reality, you need to just take it one step at a time. So find one little thing to get better at. Yeah. There's a way that I learned to draw a hand using a little house, but I forgot how it works. You like draw. I need to check out my hand drawing book. You draw like oh, a house. Oh yeah. It's gonna draw Yu-Gi-Oh hands. Oh, because the house <laughs> is for the fingers, right? Well, it's like the house is for the fingers <laughs> yeah, is a horrifying thing. Well, to like say. The, the roof, the roof part, because it like slopes up and then slopes back down, <laughs> and then that's the that's oh, the maybe. roof shape. That's how I, I thought, remember it. Okay, I think. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's see if I can do this right. It's like it goes. It's like this. It's like this. You got. This is the wrist. And then you got, fingy, fingies, go, here. Like this, thumb go here, like this. Sort of like that, hand. And I've never hand. used the house method before. Yeah, it's Ooh. not great. Maybe it's maybe it's wrong. No, I mean, it makes it, it makes sense. Sort of go. It's sort of like this. I just use my own hand. Yeah, you can also just look at a hand. <laughs> yeah. That's why all my characters have little baby hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you got your your wild hands reference book, so yeah, the, you'll start getting some wild the purple tunnel who does, hands, like the weird, really well done Yu Gi Oh hands. Put out a book that's only about drawing hands, so I just got it last week. You could throw hands. That's and very I hands. promptly played Super Mario 3D World all weekend. <laughs> and didn't look at it. <laughs> nice. Uh, I did see, Nathan, some drawing suggestions for you, if you'd like. Okay, great. I'm just, draw I'm just doing... I saw... The only one I noticed was three cat boys in a trench coat. Three cat boys in a trench coat. It reminded me of my Neo pen. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay. Do that one. I'll do that one, and everyone can keep... This, this guy's looking at the three cat boys in the trench coat. <laughs> like, trying to figure it out. Uh, I'm gonna what drop another I, question on us. What am Do I it. Looking at here? Yeah. Um, Suit Veil asks: Any advice on changing small elements of your style without changing your style as a whole? I like my style generally, but I'm sick of how I draw mouths. But when I try to change it up, the whole face doesn't look right. Um, just keep working at it, I guess. I actually changed how I drew noses at the end of last year. It's changing the whole game. <laughs> yeah, I've done that a lot too, where like I find one element that I like doing yeah. a different way and then it kind of has like a ripple effect outwards. Yeah. Where like other things have to adapt a little to suit the new style, the new way. But all the same, if you just keep tweaking at it over time, then it'll work. Yeah. yeah. I think you can do a lot of experimentation and like try out a bunch, like look to artists you like and try out their way of doing it and see if you can adapt maybe just your other elements a little bit to make them fit uh, a little better. Yeah. But it is just like a lot of experimentation and failure. Yeah. It's like finding one that you like and then just plugging it in and then eventually you'll be like, oh, I know how to make this work. You just have to see it a lot. Essentially. Yeah. And and let it be okay the ones that don't work. Like when you try it and it fails, yeah. that's fine because that's part of the narrowing down process. Next question. Yeah, you'll get there. Oh. Get there, you'll figure it out. <laughs> you'll freaking get there. Uh let's see what else we have. I'm a scrolling. Uh, uh, count cat boys. Countess Tomato said, "How did you learn to draw poses without reference? Did it just happen naturally after using reference for a long time?" That's a good question for Karina. I feel like. Uh, um, well, I was an animation major, 
So I took a lot of life drawing classes. And in those life drawing classes, since it was like animator uh, geared towards animators, we did a lot of like gesture drawing. So like really short poses. It was very rare for us to do a pose that was longer than 10 or 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. and um, usually it was more in the one to five minute range. So when you're doing things that quickly, you get really good at breaking down like the body, um, you know, compounded with uh, learning just general anatomy and proportion. So uh, once you just do that a lot, <laughs> uh, you start to get a good sense of like how to pose, you know, the body without it looking like, too weird, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah. TLDR practice question mark. I, I learned a little yeah. anatomy. Yeah. I've, I've drawn skeletons. <laughs> I really feel like the the quick because we did a lot of the the two to five minute drawings too. Like I took a fashion illustration course as you mandatorily have to do at FIT. Go figure. Um, <laughs> and the warm-ups would always be like for 10 minutes, you're doing 30 second sketches and then you move on to the two and the fives. And I feel like what you learn from doing 30 seconds of 10 minute quick sketches is that in the beginning, you try to draw exactly what's there and then you, you want to have a good drawing. And then over the course of 10 minutes, you realize you're not going to have a good drawing. So you just try to get the forms down and you break it down. And then when you, so when you go into the two to fives, you look at like the base that is there first and you try yeah. to just get that motion in with the building blocks. Yeah. I found those always very helpful. It was more helpful than the 20 minute long ones. I felt like, well, for yeah. gesture, I think the yeah. shorter ones were better. Because it helps to like have a sense of anatomy and like yeah. no musculature and all of that stuff. Because, you know, obviously, if you're going to do like a really wacky pose, you mm -hmm. know, you have to know like, hey, you know, where what goes here? And then, you know, where do these muscles turn? Mm -hmm. But um, all the same, I, I've always found that for posing and stuff, uh, gesture was kind of where like the stronger thing for me. Yeah. On I had an anatomy. Like, yeah. On top of like anatomy. Yeah. Learning. <laughs> I had an anatomy class with this woman who uh, has the best name ever. Her name is Jane Bigsby Weller. Wow. Uh, she ruled. She was uh, at a 90 degree angle, this woman, because her back was not great. Oh but she God. would always walk over to the models and like point out like the muscles we should be looking at. And the one that I always remember is the tensor fascia lata, which is in the leg. And she's always like, see how it's popping out here? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't, Bigsby. But yeah, I love that you just name dropped that one. Yeah. Because like I got a lot out of my anatomy class. But, you know, once you like learn a bit of formal anatomy and yeah. it's just like okay now where's all the shortcuts so i never have to think about where this muscle or this bone is again because i don't want to know this information actually i'm not a doctor yeah um so it, it's it's a fun combination of both yeah agreed yeah i think also um if you practice a lot of fast gesture drawing it just makes you so much less precious about the early stages of your drawing which let you get to the fun later stages quicker because uh, you can iterate a lot faster so you can like bust out you know 10 poses in like a couple minutes yeah. and then figure out where you're going with your piece early on yeah and then you kind of have the basis for your drawing set early and you don't have to uh futz around with that stuff later as much mm. I have one that I would like to answer selfishly. Yes. <laughs> Please. How do you put... Diva Dylan. Sorry. It's blue <laughs> on black, so I'm having a hard time seeing it. Okay. Any advice for putting emotion of like deeper thought into your art? I'm usually pretty uh, detached as a design student, but I have a lot of fine arts courses that... This, uh, this semester. Uh, sorry. This semester <laughs> that are like... Sorry, I'm so far away because Jacob nudged me over into the corner. I'm kidding. Wow. Um, this semester, 
that are like, what are you feeling? And I have no clue how to accomplish that. Um, lighting, I feel like. Composition. I feel like mood is like the thing that is most important to me in illustration, which is why I'm yeah. uh, answering this. It's just like you can really accomplish it with scale and scale relative to your composition. So like if it's a little spooky, you can make the person kind of more hidden, like there's something hiding in there. Or, you know, if the person is um, like if it's an overwhelming feeling, then you put a lot in there and you have it surround the person like there's a lot that you can do with uh composition and size um yeah and i just love to make people tiny in illustrations because i feel like <laughs> it's such like a a lonelier feeling and sometimes a spookier feeling and it's it's a way to like cheat like in uh the draw detectives finale all the characters talking about you know, the A team not knowing what the A is for an A team and just having them like tiny and in the corner is was like fun because it juxtaposed this like very close up of this other character. And it's just like this quiet little moment where they're quietly in the corner and not surrounded by anything, <clears throat> just gray. They're just like, eh. yeah, I think there's a big difference, too, in like what you're saying, which is like using technical know-how to convey a feeling mm -hmm. <laughs> and maybe like what they're saying from like a fine arts class perspective of like putting your feelings into the art ah. like in a more abstract yeah. sense okay and i i think it's just it's an interesting juxtaposition because i'm i've always come from more of the side of like julia where it's like thinking about what feeling you want your piece to convey mm -hmm. and then what sort of technical things you can do to make that happen Right. But I think it's different than like the more like abstract or impressionistic yeah. artwork. I feel like, like yeah, go ahead, Karina. for um because I like to do vent art. <laughs> Don't we all? And I feel like that's just kind of vibing extra hard on a piece. Sometimes I'll listen to songs that match the mood of what I'm going for. I've said this before, typically, that if it's like I have an idea and I got it from this song because I like listening to music, I'll just listen to that song on repeat until I finish because I'm irritating. But <laughs> I do the yeah, same thing. I now. don't know. I feel like if it's not something you kind of do naturally as an artist, it is really difficult to get into that like headspace of like, you know, really transferring your mood and your feelings into a piece rather than just doing it in a very technical sense. For sure. But it's definitely easier to do in a technical sense. <laughs> yeah, I think it depends on your what your goals yeah. are really. But yeah. just, just to cover all bases with that question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think if you're going pure feelings, you really gotta turn off technical brain and just be like just go. Let me feel the vibes. Yeah, you got a vibe. Yeah, yeah. You, you you simply must vibe. Um, uh, I feel like I saw another good one. I, I have like a practical question that might be good for the students and or young people in the audience. Yeah, go for it. From Genie 6474, any <laughs> advice on making art portfolios? I, I don't use have that any. advice. Yeah. <laughs> I've never made an art um, portfolio. Well, I, I've made a few and I've I've uh been on the other end of a few. And it depends on what you're making it for. Yes. Yeah. Um, for example, if you're applying to a college, like an art college or an art program versus a job that's kind of different things. Um because I've applied to plenty of schools and for most of them, you want to include um, your foundational work all and your personal work. Mm -hmm. Whereas for like specific jobs, you want to lean more into like personal work and the type of work that would, you know, vibe with the job that you're applying to. Um, for school stuff, I think the rule of thumb that... Uh, I always used was kind of like, uh, I actually don't remember because it's been a long time since I started college, but um, start with life drawings and all of your like technical work and then go into like your more personal stuff and on that and on strong notes. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like a thing that I learned because I, I never had like any traditional art training, but that I've learned because I watch a lot of like art YouTube videos and stuff and people talking about their separate art career paths because they find it interesting. But that's the advice I see a lot of like professional artists saying is like, cater your practice and your portfolio to whatever field you want to go yeah. into. Yeah. Like if you want to be like an environment designer, then don't practice a whole bunch of, you know, close up portraits, like practice mm -hmm. environment design. <laughs> it's like a separate skill set. Yeah. Um, gosh, what was I about to say? I just forgot. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Uh, I think also to Karina's point, um, <laughs> book ending your portfolio, like this was the advice that I got when I was in college is like, bookend your portfolio. You want to start strong and you want to end strong because usually people remember the first piece and the last piece. Yeah. Uh, I remember what I was going to say. Go for it. Because um, I, like I said, I was, because uh, I went to an art high school, which, you know, you also had to make a portfolio and do exercises to audition into it, which is really weird to do when you're in like the eighth grade. But um, I think this kind of goes, you know, as well for like art schools um, is that, you know, they want to see both like your personality and your potential rather than the fact that you're like an amazing artist, especially mm -hmm. when you're like really young, because, you know, some people don't have art education when they're children or when they're like high schoolers, like they don't have as much. So it's just a kind of about showing, you know, both your technical skill and potential to improve, but also you know, your personality. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's definitely that potential thing. It's like, they want to see that they can work with you. Yeah. Yeah. That's all really good advice. Yeah. Um, should we get another question? I saw Wait. a lot of, Nathan Wait. probably wants to stop drawing. <laughs> I would love to stop drawing. Nathan, you can stop drawing. I've stopped drawing. Karina, do you want to draw or do you want someone else to draw? I can do whatever. All right. I'll pull up my thingy. Hop on the sticks. I almost pressed leave. <laughs> <laughs> I just leave the call. I'll do whatever. Anyway, Bye. <laughs> <laughs> that is one thing to do. Who saw a good one? You saw I, a good one? I saw like a lot that were in the same vein. Also, let's, let's get, get a, Karina yeah, a suggestion. Let's get a suggestion before yeah. we start answering that. Uh, so let's get some Karina suggestions. Nerd Vulture. Himbo Waluigi. <laughs> uh, us all as the Scooby Doo gang. Uh, that's that's a lot. That's that is yeah, a lot. that is a lot. <laughs> Two chickens. <laughs> Let's see what else. Octopus professor. Someone simply wrote dragon, Just which is very dragon. funny to me. <laughs> Just a dragon. Dang. Mario and Luigi as princesses. Goblin hours. Uh, <laughs> goblin hours. I don't know what goblin hours means, but I, it's just funny to say. Scoot desk. It's like, you know, hour. some some professors have office hours. What if I just some like draw my own hours. Neopets? <laughs> it's like, don't come to my office. I'm behaving as a goblin would during that time. <laughs> From three to These five. are my goblin they're like I have office hours where you should come talk to me, and then I have goblin hours where you under no circumstances <laughs> should come talk to me. Uh, <laughs> just draw the Neopets. <laughs> draw the Neopets. It's I always draw my an Neopets. Hatsune Bucky. If you want to draw the Neopets, I would love to see them. Just do it. Yeah, so chill Here, I'll I'll go I'll go a little buck wild and y'all answer more questions. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Throw Hatsune Bucky in there. Jacob, good luck finding that question again because no, I, I, I remember goes. because a lot of people asked different wordings of the same question. Okay, which was basically them saying they have a hard time practicing because they get really frustrated and then don't want to draw. Um, and like, what's a way to overcome that feeling of like getting frustrated when you're trying to practice? Fair. And I actually have an answer for this that uh, me and Nathan talked about in on Friday's draw class, Patreon bonus stream, um, oh. which was uh, you know, <laughs> a little French plug. champagne, a little plug there. <laughs> mm. um, yes. But essentially I think it really helps if you make 
the practice when you're first starting out uh, practicing, like if you're getting frustrated a lot and not doing it, make the practice so easy that when you stop, you you leave yourself wanting a little more. Like you feel like you didn't quite draw enough. So like literally set a timer for like five minutes at the beginning and say, I'm going to work on this, whatever it is I want to practice for five minutes. And when the timer goes off, you have to stop for the day. Uh, I guarantee you that timer will go off and you'll be like, I felt like I was just getting into it, but now I have to stop. <laughs> so then the next day you'll be like, okay, five more minutes. You're raring to go. I'm raring to go because yeah. I, I want to get back to what I was doing. And then literally maintain that for like a week and then up it a little bit the next week and be like, okay, 10 minutes. And as soon as you start hitting that that threshold where you're like, I'm getting frustrated, lower the time again. Um, it's You, you got to like treat yourself like as if you had never lifted a weight in your entire life and now you wanted to start lifting weights, you're gonna have to start at like the two pound weight and do like a couple reps and that's gonna be what you can do. Um, if you lift like a 50 pound dumbbell right out the gate, you're gonna be so sore and so upset that you'll never wanna lift a weight again. So it's a similar thing, that's my advice. That yeah. would give me so much anxiety. <laughs> well, you're a special type of person who already likes to draw and is good at it. But imagine if you got <laughs> yeah. so mad every time you tried to draw. I mean, I, I have draw. those moments. Well, if you have uh, alternate advice, feel free to offer it. No, I'm, I'm not saying that wasn't good advice. <laughs> I'm saying that it just wouldn't work for me because I, I have a problem where I just can't stop working. Well, if you're a workaholic, then you might have separate issues. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a different question. <laughs> yeah, it's a different if, if question. You get, if, if when you get frustrated, your solution is to work harder, then this This question may not the, be for you. This will not yeah. help you, but you also will not be happy. No. <laughs> it's not going to be good. <laughs> Don't it's be a workaholic. Problem. It's a different Here, problem. Here's, yeah. here's my alternative advice. If yes. you're like having trouble getting drawing, just do what I do and find a really niche interest where there's no pre-existing like uh, fan content for it and you have to do it. <laughs> and then you have to like get better at art to like make that content. I see you're doing the writer's do fan fiction advice. Yeah, just just do that for your entire life. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I did personally. <laughs> How do I practice my writing? I want fan fiction of the show that doesn't exist. I will do it. <laughs> I yeah. gotta get good at comics to make my comic exist. Fine. <laughs> That's, that's freaking that's really do good it. Advice too. But if you find a way that like makes the drawing a joy, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, then you can do it as much as you want. But if if you don't have that like sort of passionate niche that you feel like you need to feel like you need to fill, because I'm not the type of person that does. Um, I have to trick my brain in other <laughs> <Yeah>. ways because uh, <laughs> I love two types of people. <laughs> I love improving, but I don't love devoting the time to practicing. So. Timers are a big help for me personally. I just love a lot of things that no one else loves. <laughs> so I get really good at my craft to inflict that love upon others. <laughs> and here we are now. <laughs> yeah, it's all good advice depending on your your personality. <laughs> and if you and really also, hate drawing, of, then don't you don't have to do it. Also. A lot of these questions I feel like you could find answers to in the the vod of the how to practice um draw class which is available for everyone now because it was many months ago and i thought that was a helpful one yeah that was it's up on Drawfee extra our bonus youtube channel in case you didn't know where you can yeah. watch vods of our streams and our even our patreon bonus streams a month after they air uh go live on there too so we've we've talked about some cool stuff there as well yeah, I just think you like provide a lot of helpful, um, specifically practicing art uh, advice in that in that one, and it's it's like it's a different discipline, practicing versus making finished art, and you need to think about it differently. Yeah, than and, you would. And again, it's a it's definitely a personality thing. Uh, <laughs> If like your practice is what you just want to work on because you're having fun, then that's awesome. Um, but again, for people like me, I have to treat it as its own separate 
separate thing. Uh, let's get another question. Does anyone else want to pick one? I saw some good ones. Um, they're just going so fast, it's hard to read the whole thing. Wow. So many of them are so long. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a good one for Nathan Jacob. That's us. That's us. Do y'all ever regret not having gone to art school? Do you feel like it puts you at any disadvantage in the art world? Yeah. I do. <laughs> I don't. Huh? <laughs> we have differing opinions. Go, or not, go, not go. Not art school, but like I, you know, even even at a non art school, you can still be an art major or even minor, or just like have taken more classes. I guess I I regret not taking more advantage of uh, the time I had in college to study uh, what I was interested in. And instead, I, you know, chose a relatively like easy major, but one that I thought would like get me a job, and not so much like taking advantage of the the fact that I was in this like institution of higher learning to like expand my horizons and also like take advantage of the fact that there were many people there who could help me improve uh, in drawing. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it, it, it stuff worked out anyway. So you know, hindsight's <laughs> hindsight's twenty twenty. So, but right. yeah, like I do, I do think about that like, <laughs> when I hear people talk about like art school. I feel like you can tell. I mean, you can tell when people have like worked on their fundamentals, and that's something that I feel like I am still sort of playing catch up on uh, when I draw. But that's okay. You can you can still learn. Never too old to start learning. So it's fine. Yeah. I went to art school and I feel like I'm still catching up with my fundamentals. Well, there you there's go. There's so yeah. many fundamentals. <laughs> there's a lot. There's never ending fundamentals. <laughs> I guess I feel like because we live in this beautiful era of information, that I never have felt like there was anything I needed to learn or wanted to learn that I didn't have immediate access to someone telling me how to do it. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like no, if I just like self-motivate and like and and work on the thing, then I can I could learn how to do anything. Yeah. Uh, it's just a matter of doing it, which I don't always want to do. Uh but I know that I could. Something about like being in a in a school setting though and like being surrounded by other people who are also aspiring artists and like i don't know so some about that i like maybe i romanticize it in my head because i didn't do it i didn't I mean, do it that way as someone who went to art school i do like to remind people that you don't need art school <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah as someone as someone who didn't go to art school uh, i like to remind people that too it's just and like, it's very expensive <laughs> but, it's something i it's something i think about um but yeah but i mean because I know a lot of successful people who didn't go to art school or, you know, went and dropped out and like went on to better things because like they're the sort of person that can self-motivate and I'm not. So like <laughs> I do, I do really well in like an academic environment because I, I need that sort of like pressure. So art school worked out for me and you get to, yeah, you get to like meet your peers who are like also aspiring artists and you have those connections and it's really cool so it's very give and take <laughs> yeah it's also I mean, really hard <laughs> my, it's hard <laughs> my favorite classes in college were my art classes so maybe that should have been a hint that i should have <laughs> done more but. as someone who went to art school <clears throat> i think the only reason i don't well i liked art school i loved my college and i loved my college experience but i think the reason why I also love it is because I went to a very cheap art college. My four years of college were $12,000 altogether. Damn. Nice. Yeah, that's why I went to FIT. Uh, I, I got into a bunch of other schools. I got into like Parsons and Pratt with scholarships, but they still were not cheaper than FIT was. Yeah. Um, so I went there because it's part of like the state school system. Um, oh. yeah, which is why it was so cheap for me. So I went there, but man, I think the thing that the FIT illustration 
major teaches you is how to work all day every day and do the hustle because i was in class from eight in the morning till nine thirty at night every day <laughs> and that's that's straight classes so it's like yeah i think if it wasn't cheap i would have hated it every time you say that i like want to vomit all over like, <laughs> desk and body and floor and ceiling did you never have like the art school moment <laughs> <clears throat> Mine's was um, being awake for three days straight to finish Dirty Paws. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah. And um, which resulted in me uh, like going up to my friend's room because I just like really wanted to cry, but in front of someone. And he like <laughs> let me do that and then Aww, told me to like eat his weed <laughs> so that I can fall asleep because I couldn't sleep because I was like having major anxiety. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I don't want to eat your weed. And he's like, you're right. It's old. It might not be good. And I was like, why did you do this to me? <laughs> <laughs> and just then I listened. It? Just like not an edible, but just, just yeah, eat the... Yeah, he just offered That's me the bag. Not... That's not. <laughs> He's How very much funny. sleep was that guy working off of? <laughs> that friend. And um, and then I listened to uh, "Hallelujah" by Panic at the Disco because it had just come out for seven hours straight on repeat. And then I like just listened to Nightcore playlists until I finally finished my film at six a.m. on the day it was due. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of classes and, then, and a lot of projects you gotta yeah. do. And I like can't yeah. eat craisins anymore because I, <laughs> <laughs> I ate too many while finishing my film because it was the only thing that my body could like accept because oh, no. I like wasn't eating. <laughs> wow. And I I just they were like all over my room. <laughs> it was it was a real mess. Art school can be a lot. <laughs> Art school's a lot. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like I've had not three days straight, but like you know, being in college, like you stay up, you know, pulled all nighters and like worked. I remember like feeling crazy and like staying up super late finishing stuff. But like at the end of it, I don't have like a beloved piece of of work that still exists that like people can enjoy. You know, it's like it was some like paper that I don't. <laughs> that I don't remember <laughs> yeah. or yeah. like, so I don't know. I think there's like, clearly what happened the way I did it worked fine for me. So yeah. I can't regret it too much, but it is. Yeah. At the yeah, end of the day, like, my degree never got me any jobs. <laughs> yeah. You're I still think, well, Maybe it got me one job, maybe tech, I not, think, not even my degree, just people I met in school, but otherwise it was just me saying like hey i <laughs> post art on the internet <laughs> maybe maybe i don't regret not going to art school but i regret not doing more art during yeah. college and i think you know you can regardless of whether you go to art school or go to college at all like you can of course easier said than done but like you can try and if, if art is what you're interested in doing be be doing it you don't need to not do it for reasons you don't need to come up with excuses why you can't do it you can just do it that's true though that's what that's me talking to my past self <laughs> <laughs> maybe your past self will hear you do more art and then you'll miraculously get better get better in the present whoa that would be amazing that'd be pretty whoa. cool <laughs> imagine if time travel worked like that i would love to imagine that <laughs> you should instead i have to what practice in the present to get better mm. in the future eh. Ugh. horrible i hate it <laughs> yeah i guess it turns out art school is one of those things that varies person to person yeah. like everything in the whole world everything that was yeah. me hijacking the question a little bit to also appeal to anyone who wants to ask about art school <laughs> yeah that was a twofer. Yeah, you get a yeah. little, you get I a think, little bit of both. No, I think it's that's good. Yeah, like <laughs> the, the the number one, like all of this, I think, is superseded by like don't don't break the bank on your yeah. education because yeah. like you'll you'll get good things out of it, but if can, it's also like something that's not easy for you to do, 
I don't know if I'd ever recommend it. Cause yeah. It can be a lot. I, and saw... I don't regret my experience in art school, but do know that the <laughs> three days awake, eat, almost eating weed story <laughs> did happen. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't eat the weed. Karina. I'm also glad I didn't eat the and weed. He just gave me like a bunch of <laughs> melatonin pills that, that I didn't like a better even thing take to until, eat. Yeah. yeah, until the next day, and then I slept for 13 hours straight. It was Should really have great. Should have offered those first. <laughs> Well, he didn't, <laughs> but that's okay. He's really fun. <laughs> um, I saw a, a question that was a lot more like um, a specific thing about the process of drawing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is someone was asking how you pick shadow colors when you're shading. Shadow. Because they said they tried doing like one shadow color in the whole piece and it looked weird. Uh, and they, they're not sure what the process is for shadow colors. Consistency. So I don't know. Maybe Karina can do like a little shadow demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> On these guys? <laughs> <laughs> just like real fast at like I one mean, location or something. I will the say off. <laughs> just yeah, came I, out of that I did talk class. about it a little bit in my color draw class, which just came out today. Oh, nice. Um, Although by that part, I was off script. So it is kind of incoherent in like my opinion, but maybe, <laughs> maybe it's not. I don't know. I, I always think I'm incoherent I've, and I've, then I'm told I'm I not. I found it incredibly <laughs> helpful. Um, but I guess it just kind of depends on like what you're going for with like your color scheme. Cause I mean, most of the time I use one shadow color for the whole piece. And, um, you know, sometimes that doesn't work because, you know, if you overlay purple on purple, it doesn't look as nice when you overlay purple on red. So, you know, you can also just adjust on a case by case basis. I don't know, but, um, yeah, I, uh, any, anyone else? <laughs> got, got I, something? I never <laughs> pick a color for my shading. I, I block it all in in gray, in a gray multiply layer, and then I go to adjustments and I colorize it and just slide the hue slider around until <laughs> it looks nice. So that's one way to do it. Nice. But yeah, yeah basically, I like, I... Shading things to say. My big my big takeaway from the one uh, digital coloring class I took uh, post college was that like it doesn't super matter what colors you pick initially because you can adjust them until they look right. Like use the adjustments, use hue saturation, use color balance, and like s slide everything around until it looks the way you want it to. Yeah. 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 Um, with non digital art, I do not have any advice. <laughs> we sorry. don't talk about that. We, do not, we don't talk about her. <laughs> Traditional? I think, <laughs> I think it's you have to remember your light source first and foremost. Remember where the yeah. light's coming from. What is the source of the light? Where are they? So, like, if it's the sun and they're outside, your colors are actually gonna get a bluer tint uh, naturally, because that's the atmosphere interfering is everything gets a slightly bluer tint. Uh, if it's inside and if it's like a stronger light and like an unnatural light, it you know it's gonna be a little more washed out. So basically my number one rule for choosing a shadow color is like, don't add black to the color that just mutes yeah. it unless you're in a very specific situation that calls for it. But you usually want to add um, some saturation to it or you want to add some blue or some red to brighten it up but still make it a shadow color. Um, if you look at like the Photoshop color palette, usually my rule is that you go, you like have your base color and then you you know, for, for a kind of catch-all situation, you go down right. You go diagonally down to the right. And then depending on how strong your light is, you go further and further away diagonally from that color. But it's just like the reason I'm bringing that up, even for non-traditional, is that 
the more saturated colors are on the right and then the darker colors are at the bottom. So you still add saturation, but you're still making it darker. So you never want it to be like more muted. You still want it to be punchy like the rest of it. And there's, if you stick with that, there's some unified look in that. Or if you take every color, for example, and you add a little bit of blue every time, it will look unified. You basically don't want to like change temperatures unless it's on two sides or, you know, you, you're getting two different light sources, like a warm light source and a cool light source. Then you can, you know, flip it. You just have to remember that that's happening. Yeah. As long as you're sort of accounting for all the pieces. Yeah. Of your environment. Visual expression yes. and pose on Bucky Miku is it's so, so funny. good. Yeah, it's very good. <laughs> I'm here too. <laughs> like, <laughs> it seems like this would be the character that got cropped out of the photo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do not know a photo is being taken. They're just someone, like, oh, hey guys, what are so, you doing? Someone takes a photo out of the frame and they see that part of it is folded over and they unfold it and it's Bucky Miku. <laughs> Someone, uh, I think I'm oh, done. Okay, this is I'm awesome. done with this drawing. <laughs> Someone so had good. a very quick um, question for me and Jacob. Pets. That's us. Uh, where did we find Olive and Joy through? We found them through the Brooklyn Cat Cafe. That's it. Yeah, there you go. Bro look it up. Brooklyn Cat Cafe. It they rule. They take their cats from the ASPCA. You can go meet them and hang out with them. CDC. That's where my brother went to high school. Uh, drawing suggestions for Jacob. I also saw a question that's easy to answer while drawing suggestions come in. Somebody was Hi. asking, why do you draw in Photoshop and not Illustrator? I saw that question. Which is a very common one that I Didn't see. Can we just answer that like recently? Uh, we, we'll, we've answered we'll it keep, before. <laughs> we'll keep answering Every, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. easy to answer. It's that common. Um, the Illustrator's they're just, vector. They're just freaking named wrong, honestly. They are. <laughs> Like Illustrator is <laughs> like good for vector art and it's good for design, but it's actually less Call good it for like freaking designer. Designer. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Photoshop has like better brushes and more versatility. More, more versatility we for know art. It. Yeah, mo the main reason is it's <laughs> what I it's, it's it. what I already know how to use. Like people, because you could get. Let me just click. That. I mean, I I learned it. Uh, in high school when I was on the school newspaper illustration staff and they were just like copies of Photoshop for the school. That's how they get you in school. But if like, you know, it's expensive now. So if you, if you don't like, there's no reason to learn it. If like you're already comfortable using something else, it's just what, yeah, I'm used use to. your student discount if um, you want Photoshop. I'm gonna draw goblin yeah. hours. Draw goblin draw, hours. Draw goblin hours. <laughs> um, yeah, like I, I think it's it's pretty intuitive and easy to use. But like nowadays, there's so many options. Like people are always bringing up the fact that there are like a lot of free or cheap options, and like yeah, I I don't have. I'm not like a, a Photoshop loyalist in that yeah. like I don't really only... know where things just... stand anymore in like academia or even in yeah. like the art industry etc but you know uh, Adobe programs in general used to be like or like I uh, used to be our question mark industry standard so like if you go into a job they want you to know certain programs but I guess sure. that also just depends because you know, now there's a lot more programs and some of them are just better <laughs> and aren't so yeah. darn expensive. Yeah. Yeah. So. I guess like learn it if it's a job requirement. Yeah. But, uh, you know, but, it's pretty similar to. Yeah, I feel like a lot of like stuff. art programs have very similar, you know, UIs. Yeah, like we were, we draw an Aggie IO sometimes, yeah. which is like a very simplified yeah. program. But it like so is I, very I had no to issue picking up Procreate when I got that on the iPad because it's basically like simpler Photoshop. Jacob, so, I think I yeah, know this. I remember, one. <laughs> remember Justin. This isn't a goblin. Justin this is just a sad uh, man. 
paint tool Psy even oh, after he, he started working at uh wow. at College Humor. Yeah, I used to use paint tool Psy. Once you know one, you can gravitate to another one and kind of pick it up over time. <laughs> yeah. We would just make him use Photoshop whenever he guessed it on Drawfee, and so all those episodes, he would just be, like, sort of moaning. <laughs> like, oh, why is it different? <laughs> yeah. Like, everything's a little bit different, but everything's the basics a little are different. all they the same. Because, like, exactly same with animation same. programs, because I learned Flash first, and then TV Paint, and then Toon Boom, and, like, if you know Flash or whatever the heck it's called anymore, like... Once you kind of have an idea of like how that UI works, you can move to like a uh, tune boom pretty easily, which is just extra proficient and more complicated um, or TV paint, which is everything is a keyboard shortcut. So don't accidentally press anything, but otherwise <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love to accidentally press things. It's yeah, my there was there was one time I was drawing. on a job in a studio using TV Paint, and I accidentally got rid of my like player controls, like play, like pause, etc. So I couldn't mm. test my scene, and it took me like thirty minutes just to figure out which button I pressed to like, <laughs> get rid of it. God, I've yeah. done that. <laughs> and I was just I mean, like, they're... I'm embarrassed. I need to go take my lunch break. <laughs> Even, and I, you know, after all of that saying that like Photoshop is what I'm most used to, there'll still be times where I'll like hit something by accident and everything yeah. disappears and I'll have to just. Yeah start over i like self-taught to... myself photoshop so i don't even know how to do half the shit y'all do <laughs> yeah it's uh everyone knows like a different set of specific things in yep. photoshop and then every time i hear the way anyone else does it i'm like what are you talking about <laughs> i've never seen that me and jacob's conversation every conversation we have about photoshop <laughs> yeah is we're like why don't you do it this way um i'm trying to find a question i can't scroll the chat i was so sure you were just gonna write p on that <laughs> p. that's my no, pee jar <laughs> eating his peanut butter thunder P emu eight says but, i moved from it. side to procreate and it was so hard to adapt i don't know i feel like anytime i'm just like faced with a new thing i have to learn i just kind of fuck around <laughs> until it like makes sense to me yeah because even when I moved from like, uh, like when I got my first tablet, I was like, well, I have a tablet now. And then I just learned how to use it over the course of a summer. <laughs> uh, stuff like that. Sometimes you just gotta run with something until it makes sense to you. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I've tried using like the tablet versions of Photoshop and stuff. And it's just like, I'm like, where's my other screen? Where's the, where's all the stuff? <laughs> Where's all the stuff? How do I make the stuff appear that I want to see? And then I get overwhelmed. The yeah. reason I do most things is because if I didn't, I would get overwhelmed. <laughs> like that's the answer to a lot of questions. <laughs> it's like, why do you do this? It's like, cause it's keeping me from getting overwhelmed. I don't want to be frightened. I don't want to be frightened while working. I mean, I already, I don't want to be frightened by more things than just like the general fear that comes from creating art for public consumption. Uh, I don't need more yeah. things frightening me while whilst doing that. Jacob, there was a question for you in the chat. Okay. Someone said, as a fellow colorblind person, how do you pick the colors? For your image uh that's a good question um it it really depends on a lot of things um but one thing i did was because I, I noticed when people would tell me that i did a color wrong and then i would just remember on the color sort of picker because like i have a tendency when i'm trying to do yellow to push too far into green Yep. Uh, without realizing it. So I try to like stay pretty safely in like the orange yellow territory if I'm in that <laughs> so that I know I'm not getting into it. Um, and I had a tendency to push blues too far towards turquoise. 
or too far towards purple. There's a lot of ways where I just like can't quite tell. And so I just kind of memorized positions that are safe, like safe ranges for me to operate in. Uh, another thing is I'll often like hair, uh, hair. I just read hair in the chat and said hair. I'll often hair. <laughs> how we know. Um, I'll often. Everyone appreciate Jacob's good hair. I'll color pick from other pieces of art sometimes. Like I'll, I'll find a piece that has like a skin tone I want to use and I'll color pick from that and then look at the color picker and be like, oh, so that's where that color is. I'll just remember that location for later. And if I want to do that skin tone, I'll do that. Um, and then another thing is like color palette generators online are fun mm. where you can just type in like, you know, blues color palette and it'll bring up like a million blue color palettes that are cool and just use those colors with like slight alterations. So stuff like that. There's there's ways around it. I have a Photoshop tip for everyone. For everyone that most people might know, but some people don't, and it will help you immensely. Can I hijack the screen real quick? You just, just, just for one. I second. deleted it's, the hair I just drew, but yes, it's it's got it hair, <laughs> hair. Um, if you want to <laughs> color pick something that maybe is like a photo, and you're trying to you know use it as practice, like you took a photo of someone's face, and you're trying to draw that, and then you want to color it, uh, if you go to the uh, eye picker, I mean the, the color picker, if you change your sample size pixel average, uh, you can change it to, I use five by five, it, you'll get the average of a five by five radius instead of that one pixel, because when you oh. zoom in, it'll oh. be really different from one pixel to another. And you'll maybe get like a greenish one as opposed to like a, a purpley one and purple is the more average one. So I did not know that. And that is actually very helpful to me. There you go. <laughs> but also remember to change off of that if you are yeah. trying to select a specific pixel. One time I changed that to like the highest sample rate on accident <laughs> and I didn't realize it for like weeks and it was driving me crazy. <laughs> yeah. I was like, why is it not picking the right color? <laughs> It's just giving me this weird beige yeah. every time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it thinks every color is beige. Yeah. Help. <laughs> <laughs> help every color is beige now question mark <laughs> like i said i self-taught myself photoshop <laughs> i also did but and then i was messing and around with it yeah, one day i never got better <laughs> it's drawing so good it's this goblin is hours what i imagine you would do in goblin hours is eat this is go butter. i mean this is this is a thing you could do. There, I, there's any number of things but just shoving handfuls of of peeb nut butter <laughs> into your gob and sort of <laughs> rubbing it around your face is certainly acceptable goblin hour behavior yeah goblin that's a, hours that's a good behavior. if they were just laying down this would be identical to my goblin hours personally <laughs> see it's it's accurate this is accurate all, goblin I, hours. all I do is try to eat while lying down flat <laughs> oh, I just remembered I've got I've got that's new bubbles me. now I do new bubbles now where I do a oh little yeah bit more. you used you did those good bubbles in the uh anime history yeah I was like, a little Look bit at... more uh oh, yeah it's not exactly right but a little more geometric, curved, love them. curved geometry. I did it in that comic, and I really liked it. It looked so fresh. New bubs just dropped. New bubs just dropped. <laughs> probably do something like this. Someone asked, how do you keep making interesting art after years? I, um, I don't know what to do with myself otherwise. I just yeah. find myself drawing sometimes. I go back to my advice earlier of yep. I just want so many niche things to exist and I'm the only one who can make them. <laughs> Sometimes I have a thought I just I'd need to get out. I continue drawing my silly little art <laughs> <laughs> for me. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's usually usually whenever I do something that I consider interesting to myself it's because I tried something new like a new style of coloring or a new 
way of uh, rendering it out or something. So it, usually that's what makes it interesting to me. And then probably that's interesting to other people too, because it's different. So yeah. try new stuff. You don't have to draw the same way every time. If you have a content schedule and you gotta come out with something. <laughs> yeah, consider having a content schedule. Yeah, <laughs> have you tried becoming a content creator? Like I just draw so many things that I would never have drawn if not for this <laughs> show. Yeah, because we have By to. virtue of forcing myself, I have to do two drawings minimum a week. I have to for my job. <laughs> I, I don't count to. draw fee. If I, it's like that's like yeah. So there, so uh, there are different. Uh, you know, it's different for each of us. Yeah. Imagine for, when you go Karina's to practice. just out here making immaculate pieces of Neopets fan art, <laughs> and for me, I'm just like, I'm I'm drawing more than I ever would <laughs> just from doing this dang show so yeah whatever works whatever works for anyone yeah pretend you have to draw two drawings a week or else you'll lose your job <laughs> yeah <laughs> pov <laughs> <laughs> uh julia do you want to draw yeah I always come back to that Give david me. bowie quote huh? that clip where he's talking about how like if you okay. feel yourself making stuff and you feel too comfortable while you're making it, you should you should push yourself a little bit further. And sometimes, sometimes I I follow that, and sometimes I'm like, no, I'd like to be comfortable a little. Yeah, bit. sometimes you just gotta be comfortable. But I feel like for me, trophy yeah. is the thing that's not comfortable, <laughs> and then I'm like, I need to draw some OCs. <laughs> yeah, I think it's good to have or a else. balance. <laughs> Of yeah, I love compartmentalizing. Creative <laughs> outlets that both make you feel comfortable and ones that force yeah. you to push yourself. For me, I feel like I'm pushing myself every time I draw because it's, <laughs> it's always it's always a struggle. <laughs> but I I I like seeing myself improve. Yeah, that's always fun. Yeah, sometimes I'll push harder than other times. Yeah. Julia, what um are you this drawing? Kaiba? It's not Kaiba. <laughs> um this is a Secret Sleepover Society reference, but um from last night's stream, I said Blood Priest Yankee. So I'm drawing Why? the Bloodborne. Why did you say that? Cuz Jacob told me to think of Bloodborne. I didn't. I told you to think of Dark Souls. Whatever. I don't understand this story. <laughs> Once again, I don't know what this story is. It's that it's new, all good. you had to be there meme everyone's doing <laughs> on Twitter. Just know that Julia's drawing Blood Priest Yankee. Okay. And yeah. That, because I she believe said in it. that. Because she yeah. said it for no reason on a stream. Yeah. The Blood Priest Yankee in King Arthur's Court. <laughs> I, get oh, that I keep joke. seeing this question, like it, not currently, but I've seen it a few times as a highlighted message of someone asking if they could interview me for their school paper or something. And I get that a lot in emails too. And uh, uh, I, I typically don't because I'm tired and busy. So sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we get those requests a lot and it's yeah. like, we just I really can't appreciate answer them all. it, but yeah. yeah and it would fairness. be unfair to answer one and not all of them yeah because i've are... been getting that i think it's the time of year when that question is getting sent out a lot because i've gotten a bunch of emails with that recently and i'm just like eh. yeah i remember i i sent i i reached out to um steven spielberg <laughs> wow, wow what a reach what are these yeah Too high he uh he did not uh i got a nice form letter back and a uh a signed like poster oh well, that's for, fun for some i think it i think it was <laughs> i want to say shrek <gasps> what i don't know did what his involvement shrek? i don't know i think he just was did working he just have one 
He just had a poster of Shrek. And was like, fuck it. <laughs> was, Signing no, this. You know what it was? It was because I wrote to him. I wrote him a letter. I wrote him like a physical letter that I sent. And it was to him, care of DreamWorks. And so I don't I don't even know if he ever saw the, the letter I sent. But DreamWorks. No. <laughs> Wait, DreamWorks, then who signed the Shrek poster? Maybe it wasn't signed. <laughs> Where is that Shrek poster, huh? Yeah, bring I it had, out. I had a Shrek poster <laughs> up in my room for a while is... because of that. <laughs> Again, what? <laughs> the stories today are wild. Yeah, I just. Yeah, I wrote. Karina, to, just I... eat the weed. <laughs> just eat the weed just and go to sleep. I think she did. <laughs> this is what's happened because of it. <laughs> just raw. <laughs> Put it in your mouth. <laughs> Spielberg helped found DreamWorks. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Ah. It was not signed. I said signed. It was not signed, but it was a there was okay. a, a large Shrek poster. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't get my interview, but I got a Shrek poster. I mean, so. that's a pretty good deal. It's pretty good. <laughs> Could be worse. You know what it was? It was a big Shrek poster, and then it was there was a little, and it, I don't think it was like, it was like a like a, a copy, like his signature was on it, but like it wasn't signed by him. Like someone had taken a photo of his signature and put it on, like a little picture of him in his like director chair. And so that was like a little thing that came and then a Shrek poster. And the Shrek poster was huge. I cannot stress this enough. Do we have any art questions? Yeah. You don't have more questions about the Shrek poster? <laughs> or eating the weed? Or eating the weed? Uh, I'll, I can give you another one. Do you need to look at the chat? Uh... uh... Or maybe someone else. Maybe Karina can see a good one or Nathan. You know I can't read, but I'll try. Um, someone asked if there are any cheap or free drawing programs we recommend, and that sort of ties in with the... Clip Paint Studio. Clip Studio, yeah. Clip Studio yeah. Paint. I Clip have Studio it and Paint. still haven't learned it. Yeah. Clip Studio <laughs> Paint's very good. Yeah, I can't, like, I can't recommend anything from experience because, as we said, I'm... A Photoshop idiot. If so. you have an iPad or a tablet, Procreate very good. There you go. If you have the I almost your... exclusively work in Procreate outside of Drawfee. I've got a question that's easy to answer. Yes. Uh, the dubious Magikarp asked, "Is using brush smoothing cheating?" Uh, yeah. Cheating is only a thing that people who aren't professional artists think exists. Yeah. <laughs> um, when you have to draw for for work, you just use whatever tool works the best to yeah. get your job Stop done. Stop gatekeeping tools. And I'm not accusing you of gatekeeping with the question. I don't want to seem like I'm, <laughs> no, I'm coming at you. That, that was a hypothetical to yeah. people who think it is cheating. Yeah. That's like saying a the carpenter idea of cheating in your mind. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Yeah. That's like saying a, a carpenter is a cheater for using a nail gun instead of hammering in every single <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It's all just tools and they've got like specific uses that um, just can make you get what you're trying to accomplish done a lot faster. And no one will know if you used it or not. Yeah. All they care about is the result. So smooth away, baby. <laughs> yeah. Smooth it up. I use varying degrees of brush smoothing depending on what type of inking I'm doing just because <laughs> it's like instead of sitting there and trying to draw the perfect smooth line 20 times, I can get it done in three times if I turn on 20% smoothing, if I'm trying to have a really smooth ink style, so. That's a time yeah. saver. That's a time saver right there. I have a question that I think is fun, personally. Yeah. Okay. How do you feel about your older pieces that are still up online? Is there anything that you think is more popular than it deserves? <laughs> oh <my> yes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Anything I drew when I was in the Marvel Cinematic Universe fandom doesn't deserve. I thought you said to Marvels. See the, light of the Marvels fandom. <laughs> the Marvel Cinematic I Universe. Love He's drawing Marvels. a circle. If anyone could right, imbue got, Marvels with okay. oh, emotionality, <laughs> it's any Karina. any MCU okay. piece of fan yeah. art I've ever done doesn't deserve the notes that it has. And we're done. It, it was just yeah. I've done it. <laughs> 
but I like having my older pieces online. I think it's fun. <laughs> like they're not great, but at least I know that they still exist and I can look at them and smile at how far I've come. And um, I, I think that's nice. And they wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't have them any other way. So I, I like that I've documented almost all of my art for like, like since I was 13. <laughs> Famously, I hate looking at. I like art. looking at it. <laughs> I'm glad we are the two different sides, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the extremes. I'm like, I love it. I love looking at my shitty, like anime, like my old deviant art. It's the best. <laughs> I hate looking at my old art. Be sure all the old college humor articles disappeared when the websites went away. Yeah. So unless they think... were reposted. Oh, Love maybe. versus lust gets reposted like twice a week if my ego searching is correct. <laughs> Love versus lust. I did one that was uh, making love versus fucking. <laughs> Which is oh. like the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yours is Love versus lust is better though. Yeah, but I didn't write it. <laughs> I didn't write making love versus fucking. Did Shay write both of those? <laughs> I think so. I think it was Whoa. part of it. We were, you know, we were really digging into the well. If something did well, it was like, how can we do it again? <laughs> yeah, let's do just it, do it again. Do it but again. Not. But have Karina draw it this time. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Smash Bros. Sex moves. I don't know if you can find those anymore. <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be particularly sad. People are going to find those. Those now. never resurfaced. Because you brought it but, up. Yeah. If there's anything I'm actually ashamed of, I would never mention it in the light of day because I know how you people are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you yeah. never I mean, let these it. Are, these Someone are will tweet it at that... you. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I mostly agree with Karina that it's, um, well, I, I see it and I'm like happy to see how far I've come in my art. And then if it's like one of my old comics that's like recirculating on like a popular website or something, I'm just like, why is anyone sharing this? It looks like absolute dog ass. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like I wouldn't be here if it weren't for those. So, yeah, got to respect it. I have a lot it's of pressure to put galore. to put like my best art always out, and I feel like I feel like I'm never quite where I want to be. So when I see my old art, it's like very much not where I want to be. And I'm just like mad about it. I feel like I've just never felt the pressure of putting my best foot forward. If you go back to like when I first started my Tumblr, I would post literally anything. <laughs> and I, maybe in a way that was kind of freeing and now I'm a shit poster, so. Mm. <laughs> but yeah. There's no standards though now, so it's fine. Just do whatever you want. <laughs> I'm gonna look for another question and here. Just like how I mispronounce "pillow," it's part of my charm. <laughs> Hello is adorable, though. Oh, thanks. I like that. I'd like that's to lay even, my head upon it. That's not even a Texas thing, because all of my Texas friends like roasted me once they realized that's how I said "pillow." Oh. Uh, this is a pretty interesting one, I think, which is besides the actual art skills, what skills do you think are most important for professional artists? Having Ooh. other interests. <laughs> it becomes important, other yes. Because <laughs> then you just bring it into your art and then it makes your art that much more personal and interesting, I think. I have so little other interests. I just hope for the best, I guess. <laughs> well, your interests are like you know the stuff that I guess, you draw yeah that's true i'm not talking about like hobbies i'm just talking uh, about like shit you enjoy oh, yeah 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 okay yeah you're correct yeah i feel like I, this is such like a live laugh love answer but passion because <laughs> you can yeah. have technical skills but you know i i feel like uh uh I, I don't know how to get into this without sounding like preachy and very biased. <laughs> Do it. I mean, I mean you've, you've made a disclaimer. They're, they're, so. they're, uh, they're asking us for our opinions. So. Oh, this is strictly my opinion, but one of my least favorite types of like art is when people just copy photographs and like have these really hyper realistic like 
very technically well done pieces, but they just like copied, you know, an image essentially. And I, I don't know. I, I feel like in a way that that's kind of, uh, I don't know. There's just this video I saw one time of someone just drawing Tony Stark. That was just a copy of like a movie still. And it was very well done, but I don't know. I was just like, eh. we already maybe have that the is image. their passion. The, the I can't judge. Existed. Yeah. I'm like, I, I can't judge that. I don't know. It's, it sounds really gatekeepy when I say that. So maybe I don't actually feel that way. It's hard to articulate, but I, I think for me, uh, doing art, it's, uh, I get a lot of joy out of it. And I feel like when someone gets a lot of joy out of their craft, it's, uh, uh, a special thing and it really, uh, elevates the work in some ways. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, it does. You can definitely feel it when someone does a piece that they were like really feeling it while they were making it. Like they were having yeah. a good time. Like whenever I'm drawing and I suddenly am having fun, um, I noticed that the piece ends up like way better. It has more like life in it and it just feels nicer to make and then to look at. Um, yeah. it's, it's neat. It's always impressive the technical skill that someone can do and I'm always impressed by it, but it never like sticks with me, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's still like good for oh, learning. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm always impressed by people who can do it, but like, um, you know, like I, no one really talks. Well, I don't know. It's, it's hard. Cause it's like, I love when people love to do that stuff and I'm always like so wowed by it, but any sort of like saying the other way feels like I'm denying the realistic way, but you know, Picasso could do hyper realistic and and Van Gogh could do hyper realistic but like the things they enjoyed the most I think are the things that are remembered the most and that's like the wilder stuff but there are definitely artists who I you know remember and who have stuck with me because they've applied a hyper realistic uh, uh, application in a really like interesting way that like both accomplished hyper realism and mood. And I was so impressed by the meeting of those two worlds. And I was like, damn it, you got it all. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I feel like it's just like one step further than yeah. the actual copying of the photo suddenly transforms. I didn't it. mean to turn this into discourse about realism. <laughs> no, it's no. not discourse. I think there's a lot discourse. of value in that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's an interesting um, discussion. Yeah, I think yeah. it's all good. Because I, I don't think that that should be devalued in any way, but it's kind of just, you know, you can kind of tell when something's doing something because, oh boy, this is like the thing that is going to get attention versus this is the thing I like and wanted to make. Yeah. Um, I yeah, don't know. As you... someone who's done a lot of like comic conventions with like comic men and people, <laughs> you get, you, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All that hair. It's Ooh. Gone. Yeah, yeah, it is I, gone. I feel like it's. Uh, uh, I, I think it's just like passion, innovation. You, uh, sorry, as someone, you, huh? Oh no, just keep. Sorry, what were uh, you saying? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was just gonna say that as someone who really likes like uh, uh, stories and like anime and comics and shit, like I, I love a good premise writing writing can be yeah. like a very great skill to have <laughs> for sure um i don't know i feel like just bring in what you love have yeah. something else other than art that you love and you know figure out how to combine the things that you're passionate about that's always the most interesting to me is you know you know touching again on what karina was saying like bring in your your personal touch and those things are usually like the mood or the uh, things that you're into and your perspective on the thing that you're into or your story, you know, I think having a personal it, angle. The, the question was what, what other skills? Yeah. <laughs> What yeah, we, we ran the whole other, gamut sort what of other answer, qualities as, we, we blew it open sorry yeah, about yeah. that <laughs> That's fine. As someone who's only ever been uh hired into 
uh, like a professional illustrating job once. I guess I'll I'll just say like writing a cover letter and interviewing are skills. Oh yeah. Yeah. And like yeah. don't don't discount that. Like obviously, for for an illustration job, um, your portfolio is probably going to be the number one thing they're looking at. But like when it comes down to picking between you and someone else who also has a really good portfolio. Um, just like being able to come across like having passion and like caring about what you make like that's all really good but like being able to convey that in a way that yeah. makes you seem like someone that would be easy to work with is also something that requires like skill and practice and so like don't don't do, like I get you going back to the college thing like the one thing I I am happy about with my like marketing degree is that like they really drilled into us like writing cover letters making your resume practice interviews like for getting a job so you know like that is something that seems like it should be self-explanatory but it's it's worth it's worth practicing yeah, yeah. Um, totally. knowing how to talk to people yeah definitely it's just hard knowing how to express yourself i, I guess mean, i'll double back on writing i feel like especially if you want to go into comics or animation or something you kind of need to know you know how uh, like have <laughs> ideas that are cool <laughs> but, no i mean it, yeah. it is important yeah and I feel it, like... it's it's hard to find a way that, to say that without it sounding just like very obvious <laughs> um yeah i just know having been like me and julia and, and nathan all three of us have been on on the other side of it too where we're like conducting interviews yeah um of like potential people to work with us and i i feel like we always tell the story of like the guy julia interviewed that like acted like a big a-hole towards her in the interview if i wanted your opinion i'd ask for it yeah which is a thing you shouldn't say um don't and, say you know, that to your interviewer so he was like perfectly <laughs> <laughs> don't say that to your future he was boss. trying to be like jokey and overly familiar and was like you uh oh know, uh, so uh oh <laughs> not that anyway he didn't not get the job because not that way <laughs> even though he was like qualified he didn't get the job because he was being a yeah. Being a b-hole, and so don't be There's a b-hole. Skill you need. Don't be a b or a hole. Fucking nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that guy was a a nightmare. He just like came in <laughs> and was like, he and and Bridgman were talking about baseball, and uh, Bridgman like looked to me because this guy was going to be working under me, and I was like, oh yeah, I don't really watch. Uh, baseball and the guy said if I wanted your opinion I'd ask for it and I was like okay well you've what? been uh, denied your <laughs> application <About I'm>... baseball? <laughs> get I'm... out of here I'm throwing your application in the garbage <laughs> and then on the uh, way out risked it all for baseball <laughs> I had no right <laughs> and then on the way out the guy said um, oh so when I get the job here I'll be sitting what probably over here and I was like you are not getting within when, 500 when get yards the, of this building. Yeah. Don't be this guy. <laughs> and like, you know, and then there's the people who are like too casual. I mean, that guy was too casual. Um, he was also just an asshole. But um, the person we wound up taking was someone that we talked to for an hour about Buffy. Um, you know, and and like... Is it Chloe? Yeah, it was Chloe. Yeah. Yeah, she's wonderful. And it's like... I don't know. It's a, it's a hard skill to learn, and it's one that you definitely have to feel out. It's one that takes time, but learn how to be professional, um, but, like, kind. Yeah, there's there's a... Yeah, again, like, it's it's it sounds obvious, but it's also something that, like... Like, maybe isn't obvious. Some, some thought, yeah. Yeah, like, it's... There's, like, there's intention. Like, there's a way to be professional and also personable like prove and to me that you can work. work yeah prove to me that you can work but also like that if i run into you outside i'm going to have like an interesting conversation or like a conversation you know i won't hate 
having to talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm going to have to exist with you in some capacity and we're going to, you know, have to like talk a lot and like, you know, being professional is more important than being familiar, I think. But hitting that line between like friendly and uh, professional is such a, a, a interesting line that you really have to feel out for yourselves and it takes time. You know, it's yeah. just something you got to feel out. Match the mood, I guess. This drawing's super good. I just wanted to yeah. get that in there. This is speaking of this mood. Is really, this is this slaps. Remind me Thank you. the um. This yeah. is <laughs> this is blood priest this? Yankee. This is blood priest Yankee. Blood, blood oh. priest Yankee. Yes. 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 I'm trying is to he, think of a way is, to make him the Yankee. Yankee is, oh, I was gonna ask if the the stuff on his head was like melting wax, like a Yankee candle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like yeah, that. That's what the Yankee is for. I mean, he's just from the the north. He's just a Yankee. <laughs> he's just a candle. <laughs> yeah. This guy is from Manhattan, and if you say that um, you are a New Yorker, but you're not from New York, he will try to cancel you. <laughs> <laughs> this his, is his uh, canceling idea of, you face. Yeah. Yeah. You say you're from TFW, where? you're about to be canceled by <laughs> Blood Priest Yankee. <laughs> from I Jersey, never you say. I identify as a New Yorker. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. I know some weirdly gatekeepy New Yorkers, and I'm like, it's fine. New York is all immigrants. Get over it. Anyway. That was just me venting for a yeah, second. Yeah, remembering that guy. This is really <laughs> like, us, like, really... letting it rip stream. Yeah. yeah. Dang. I love that. Well, it's important to know that if you're that guy, yeah. people you're that will guy, later on. People will remember <laughs> yeah. you. You Being won't get the job and out you will be remembered. That guy. Which is the, like, if you're not going to get the job, at least don't be remembered as the worst, the worst person <laughs> to interview. <laughs> to interview. <laughs> and that guy had all the it's qualifications. Like... We just didn't take him because he was such an asshole. And I knew Jeez. that with me being his boss, that he would not respect me whatsoever. And that was going to be a problem as his that's boss. Gonna a, that's going to be a problem. Respect Julia. <laughs> respect your boss. Um, unless they are a jerk. Yeah. Which I just said that I don't watch baseball, which is not jerk territory. So whatever. No. Uh, Jacob, no we got another question. Baseball. You were really rude yeah. to baseball, and I think you <laughs> need to acknowledge. I really insulted the baseball. harm you did to baseball. This is no the one, Julian no one watches Karina baseball. complain about men power hour <laughs> answer to the question. Uh, <laughs> baseball <laughs> is a thing you put on in the background like while football. other stuff happens. Yeah. No one watches it. It's a lot of standing around time. <laughs> Jacob. How could you watch it? You got one? Even baseball players don't watch baseball. <laughs> I'm still They're doing scrolling. other stuff. Okay. Watch. Look, <laughs> look at them. We're just keep talking about baseball until Jacob puts a stop to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I like going to baseball games. Baseball games are fun. But you're not watching baseball. You're doing like, other. Like, I'm like talking to friends a on a field. Baseball game. The and baseball then you is can incidental. Buy ice cream that they served you in a baseball helmet. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I know people watch baseball. I'm just. I doing like a bit. ice cream. I'm I have a question. <laughs> just what? Jacob, just yes. I have a question. Yes. Um, Lee Blissey asked, "How do y'all deal with the situations when you want to draw so much, but you situationally cannot in the moment?" Or you have to draw one thing, but super want to draw something else. And I was just thinking like, and I think we're well equipped to answer that since we draw for a job. <laughs> and then maybe what we have to draw that day to get it done on time is not what we really want to be doing. <laughs> um, and so I can say personally, I have a way of drawing that I know I can execute fast and is not really particularly... Uh, like creatively fulfilling, but I know I can do it quickly yeah. and be done. And so if I'm really not in the mood, but I have to, or I have to draw something and I want to be drawing something else, I just employ my quickest rendering strategy 
I did that Basically. today. Speed run strikes. Yeah, you can tell which Drawfee renders I did and didn't want to do. Yeah, me too. Yeah, absolutely. With your eyes. Yeah. 100%. I, I, did, a, I did a bunch eyes. today that I had a lot of fun with. I was just like in the mood today. So you'll, you'll see like a couple coming up where you'll be like, wow, that is really flat and uninspiring. Yeah. And then a few that are like, yeah. wow, Jacob was really going hog wild. You put on the these. effort in. Yeah. It just depends. Yeah, sometimes you just have to get it done. You got to employ your... <laughs> um getting work done mode yeah sometimes I mean, good enough is good enough yeah. yeah in a general sense to circle back to the question where you want to draw but you just can't because i mean i i finally like drew some some neopets fan art yesterday uh i've been feeling really gross lately so i i and like a little sick so i haven't been able to like draw in my free time which was very sad and that's just a problem I've always had because uh, I used to draw a lot and now I just don't draw that much because it's really difficult. And I think part of that is just kind of like swallowing your pride and being like, I'll get to it. At some point. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll be, I'll be able to at some point, but yeah. if I can't do it now because I'm not like feeling great or I'm, you know, I have to do something else. I will get to it later mm -hmm. and it will be so good and I'll have a really great time and I'll enjoy it. But, you know, right now I, I can't and I'm not going to try. I'm going to try not to be upset about that or kick myself over it. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that. I have had, and Karina knows this because I was asking her for <laughs> um, notes on it. But I have had a independent comic that I've been wanting to work on. And since then, I've thought of two others that I'm really excited about. <laughs> I have not had time. I thought maybe I would have some time today to do anything on it. But I have just been responding to emails all day. And I got was getting very frustrated. But it's just like, I just have to accept that that's the reality of the situation is that, you know, I, I have yeah. to put this other stuff first and that it's it's just you know I'll, I'll get to it at some point and i just can't do it now realistically i i, I just can't do it now that's yeah that's just a I fact mean, basically same with my two unfinished comic series yeah uh, just hanging up in the air because like I, i've been wanting to do the next two demons update this past month because uh it's really good, I swear to God, but it's also very long and labor intensive. But I just haven't been able to because I'm busy with draw fee and that's kind of more important. And, um, you know, and like I said, I haven't been feeling that great. So, you know, I lost a week or so to that and, you know, and I'll get to it. Yeah. But when I do, it'll be really good. <laughs> I've been waiting for this update for years, <laughs> literally. <laughs> I started two demons in 2017. I hate this, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, and when I get to it, it'll be really fun. <laughs> but you know, I'm not gonna sit around and be upset that I I haven't been able to do it because you know that that's not nice to myself. Yeah, I have a lot of other stuff going on. It's like the the comic that I sent Karina was literally I think like probably over a year ago at this point and i i just <laughs> literally all of today i've been doing emails and that's just like kind of of course gets prioritized um so i just have to you know basically in my like couple of minutes free i've been thinking of like how to tackle it once i am able to get to it and that makes me happy because i get to like kind of brainstorm about it and plan for when i do get to get there and then make yeah. the most of my time when i do have that time yeah. yeah. I just think it's so impressive. Like I I do the drawings I have to do. <laughs> like the fact that like the, the question asker is like the fact that you have more art in you that you want to get out is like a great sign. It, like it means that like you're you have the passion. Yeah. <laughs> you got I think the passion. It's, I think it's, it's I fair. just, I, you know, like I'll, I'll spend all day doing renders for Drawfee or like doing a Drawfee speed draw. And then I'll, I'll go on Twitter and see that like Karina or Julia has just done some like incredible <laughs> art apropos of nothing. And I'm like, 
it just it just blows me away every time i just think it's so impressive <laughs> i just oh, think it's so nice. impressive that you have that drive oh, to thank you. like but i also keep, think it's nice that there are people that don't there. put that kind of like pressure on themselves i don't know everyone's at a different speed and whatever works and feels best is good <laughs> yeah yeah you have yeah. the volume on on your phone and i thought i was oh losing is my that mind. what i keep hearing yeah what the i heck? thought i was losing my mind jacob has the stream <laughs> up on his phone and i thought uh, i had muted it it was on like one volume and i was like i kind of vaguely hear something and i feel like i'm going crazy yeah it was that <laughs> i'm sorry no it's okay i was like what? i was the villain all what is along. it what's in my ear what's happening uh do you have another question jacob i do Please hit us with uh, it. This one's very specific to us as Drawfee, so I feel like only we could answer this question. Oh, I love a specific to us question. The question is from Earl T. Lord. What is something you guys would have liked to know before Drawfee became popular, or what is something you would tell yourselves before going into this? That everyone would not know what Drawfee means or is or say Drawfree. Yeah. And that we shouldn't name it Drawfee. A, di a different, a different name probably would have been. I like the name. I like I, the name, but I like it too. But it, it isn't descriptive, and so yeah, you have to explain no one, it every time. No one knows. No one knows what it is. Nope. Um, that's my joking answer. That's a good no. That's a good answer. <laughs> if I had no, yeah, if I had known this was going to be the thing, like. The, the name Dra Morning Drawfee was chosen because it was like a thing that Caldwell and I were going to do in the mornings for like five minutes. <laughs> Whoops. That was, that was the name. And that was, look that at was us the name now. chosen for that. <laughs> if I had known cool. I was choosing the name of the thing I would be working on for the next uh, seven years. Wow. Um, I maybe would have put more thought into it <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny to think about <laughs> i i feel Some like people got it instantly thank you for those anyone who got it instantly bless god bless, bless you. your hearts i remember back when i was like first starting to do like web comic stuff and i would see like really popular artists or like popular people online and I would always like say, and I think this is pretty common, I'd always be like, wow, if I had that following, I would I would be, you know, just like so thankful every day to every fan. I would respond to every fan individually. <laughs> like, I think it's messed up that like these big creators like aren't responding to people. And, you know, I would be so grateful. I would, I would say thank you to every fan. I'd go to their house and say thank you. <laughs> And I think it's like a common thought of like, you know, what, what you would do if you had like a big following. And then once you get there, it's like, it's really a lot of people. And, and yeah, it, it starts, so you start to feel sure. it. Yeah, you start to feel just like the weight of like the amount of people that see the thing you do. Yeah. And it, then you start craving like not <laughs> being perceived yeah. at all <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> feel that I am still very grateful for every fan uh, yeah. of course because I wouldn't be able to do this incredible job without all of you but there's like an, another side to it that I think since internet fame is sort of a relatively recent development we don't have like the psychology yet yeah. like we don't have enough research yet to yeah. see like the long term <laughs> impacts of it we don't know how much damage I, I we've think... done to yeah. ourselves <laughs> yeah. I mean I can take a guess <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> but um, yeah, because and I think part of that is also just, uh, you know, the uh, ongoing thing of the world. Um, the all of it. The all, all of, of it, it, really. It's just, you know, it's it's a weird position to be in in the past year, especially. And it is funny. I was talking to one of my friends who also has like a pretty large following, but is a lot more like hands off with his social media. So he's just like, yeah, your fans are like, or like your followers can be like very, um, you know, 
they, they really like to uh, be really over familiar with you. <laughs> That's why I never, <laughs> I was always mean online <laughs> and I don't have that problem. And I was like, well, I like, I like it, but it is, it is a lot to deal sometimes with it's sometimes. it's too personal. And I'm yeah. like, I don't have to answer this. Like, why is this so important to you? This one thing, please just let it go. Yeah. Stuff happens in my I, own life. I really I don't have appreciate to that there are people who, get a lot of joy out of what we do especially oh, in the past year i think i think yeah. that's amazing there are yeah. so many people who like you know message us or you know send us whatever tweets and stuff just being like hey you've really helped me in this past year you know with you know being quarantined and all of that like your show has been so like has improved like my year a lot when everything else was like really terrible and like that that's really awesome yeah. i think that's great i love that the, me the getting I, messages I, I feel like that yeah i feel like i just need to is... find my own like peace and having a lot of people looking at me because it is scary to be perceived so yeah. i've been trying to work on that <laughs> Nathan, yeah, what were you saying? I, I get that oh yeah. no just like like I don't know. I'm I'm so bad at writing down my feelings. My what is your problem if you heard that by the way was because of our cat. She really bumbled <laughs> ass into um, my lap. We're getting some producer notes that We're getting this, some producer yeah. notes. This, this drawing's t this drawing's been going for a long time. I it's, yes. It's, sorry, it's I just started going and I love it. Okay, uh, just I'm sorry. Just watching you draw these little thorns. I wanted to ask if it was cool that I was just plugging away or if you wanted it's, to go, um, but it's fine with me. It's, it's... Yeah, we're just fine. Okay, cool. <laughs> I, should... I would do a full two hour stream just watching you detail something. Well, thank uh, you. And, and I just have to. I was trying to figure out a reason why he would be so uh, bloody. And I figured if it's a priest, he'd probably be committed to some sort of like. I don't know. Um, he just penitence. got done rolling around in the rose bushes. Yeah, and he's probably like, "Oh, Yankee, you got into the, the bushes oh, again, Yankee, bud." Yeah. <laughs> I should say that any you're, you're like all tangled up, bud. <laughs> any um, any sort of like venting I do about you know being an online personality, which I do sometimes uh, on Twitter, is a is a mom is me having a moment, is me having a moment because. Um, as I joke, sometimes I'm too sensitive to live and I will see <laughs> oh like, God, same. What one, I will see one comment or like <laughs> one person who's blowing something out of proportion and it will not purge my brain until then. Yep. Like, yeah. I keep thinking about the, I tweeted about this, but Jenny Nicholson had this problem where someone created a fake controversy about how she <laughs> definitely has writers for her because the tone in her video shits at some point and they were like she's not crediting her writers and she's probably not paying them justice for those writers <laughs> and he was like so that person was so incensed by this and was just like so mad that she wasn't paying these writers that she doesn't have yeah <laughs> totally made a thing up and then got incredibly mad at it and none of it yeah. was real and that's People like something that stuff up to get mad at is yeah something yeah it's something like... that we we have to deal with sometimes and i like don't know how to be like please no one listen to this to these ravings without also drawing attention to it because most of the time it's better to just like l let it go and let it die yeah on its yeah. own in its little echo chamber but the but it's also hard to see yeah like 99 percent of people are so fucking just, nice they're just yeah. so delightful and they it's really like, it, have also you know mutually improved me. my time it's spoiled me on the internet because yeah. it's that's not how most of the internet is and so like it makes <laughs> it makes me a big sensitive baby but it's like i have to remember that like what we've what we've got here is like i don't know man it's yeah. it's really good it's I mean, like that's mostly, really good, but it's really it's big and really it's just scary and, to yeah, be perceived. It's for just, sure. Like, I don't leave my house. Like, it's really scary that there's a lot of people who kind of like are aware of me. But at the yes. same time, like, it's really cool and I appreciate it. I don't know. I mean, that's why I, I, I appreciate I, the nice <laughs> messages. Yeah, started people my. Are so understanding and nice sometimes. 
and sometimes they're mean my comment by saying <laughs> um that it is like the one the one person it's literally like one person yeah and mm -hmm. our but anyway, most of you are great, and yep. thank you. Yeah. Yes. It's just the one-offs. I, you know, I, it's, uh, it's you just, know. Yeah, you get it's just every so sometimes. often. It's just jarring because, like, you come to expect a certain way people interact, and then someone, every so often, someone wants to, and it's Spice probably, things up. it's probably because they're dealing with something in their life. That yeah. I don't know about, and it's yeah. like I can only assume because it's that thing where you know more about me than I know about you, yeah. and uh, yeah, it's like the question was, what would we uh, tell ourselves yeah, just, now? Go and just yeah, be prepared to be perceived, yeah. <laughs> yeah. rebrand as Race. less friendly, <laughs> for being perceived. start earlier on that, stop yep. being so friendly. Bound boundaries. I used to think about how when I had like a much smaller following when I was just on Tumblr, uh, me and aforementioned friend tried to like hold a meetup <laughs> like we were just like what if we just invited strangers mm. <laughs> like from the internet to like meet us in a public location mm. and, <laughs> and i'm just like whoa mm. damn <laughs> <laughs> truly bold yeah i would just like say like yeah i'm in this neighborhood like who did i think i was yeah. <laughs> but jacob you um, got a a new one yeah if we're, if we're done with that uh, time yeah yeah it's wild thank, thank you all of our viewers thank you so much yeah seriously in the chat and in the future vods yes yes the future vods <laughs> i really yeah and just going back to what karina was saying about like people sending nice messages about particularly during these times yeah yeah um, those are very nice I, I they're feel really, kind of bad because I can't always answer. I, I usually don't answer a lot of I, them, but yeah, I, I, I always either. read them and they make me really happy. Yeah. If you've <laughs> sent me a message and I haven't responded to it um, and it was one of, of, of that variety, I probably read it and it probably made my day better. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't have the... Um, didn't have the, the words to respond in a way that I felt uh, yeah, would be sufficient. Sufficient, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I respond so to emails. So I'm, and... so I'm saying it now. I'm better at talking through than, <laughs> yeah. than writing, is what I've found. Or I'm I I just I don't have to see it yeah. immediately back at me and then delete it. It's I already said it. So I respond um, to emails and messages literally all day. So the best gift you can <laughs> give me is not expecting one back. Sometimes. I'll respond yeah. sometimes, but I just then because then I put a lot of pressure on myself to respond to everything and everyone, and that's untenable. Uh, Jacob, what you got? I will tell you the question I have. Yes. And here it comes. The question I have <laughs> is, what time is it? It's almost time to stop. Okay, we have time for know. one more question. Wow, that flew by. Blood Priest Yankee. Blood Priest Yankee. Because the only thing we're seeing for the rest of the stream is this yeah. man. I love, I we love... each got one drawing and it, yeah. was, it was nice. <laughs> and we discoursed and spilt mad knowledge, question mark. Question mark? <laughs> we vented we a answered... lot. <laughs> yeah, what's, what's our final question? You wanted us to uh, vent, yes. I feel yeah, like this I... one's always fun. <laughs> this one's always fun to think about and in that it's not very fun to think about, but it's what? interesting, which is what do you think you would have done if you'd never followed your art career? Nothing. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Only one art. Path. <laughs> in one path. <laughs> yeah. I was an English major, so I probably, I, I thought I, was, I would maybe do like, um, what's it called? Like technical writing where you write like, manuals for things like that was it because i knew oh, that yeah. paid pretty well and i could write um so that that could have been an option uh mm -hmm. beyond that though you know i was i was moving to new york to pursue comedy in some form or other 
uh, art art really felt like I got to jump the line on a lot of stuff like getting to just start out in New York working at College Humor like taking improv 101 classes but but having a a career where like sometimes I would see like my teachers in the in the College Humor office because they had like a line in a sketch you know <laughs> um, or like getting to perform at the UCB Chelsea Theater as part of College Humor Live um, before I had any business being on that stage. Um, <laughs> so I probably I probably would have still tried to do comedy and just would have uh, had a had a longer go at it. So maybe I'd be funnier. I don't know. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> Nathan, but funnier. It's too much. I can't handle thinking of funnier ah! Nathan. <laughs> I'm blind. <laughs> <laughs> blinded by the jokes uh what about you julia um i have like a, a million things that i've wanted to be and wanted to do i wasn't sure that i wanted to do art until like i was applying to schools um it was a, a last minute decision and then i whole hogged it but i was convinced that i would never be able to make money as an artist um and I knew that in order to make money, I'd really have to hustle. And that was a commitment that I had to be sure that I was willing to do. Um, so I had a lot of things. I wanted to do a lot of trades. Um, like Pokemon cards? Like Pokemon cards, magic cards. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> no. Um, like um, Stonks. Stonks. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Street, I had... Julia. I had a lot of like I wanted to to I wanted to be an electrician, I wanted to do construction, I wanted to do for a very short time I wanted to be a vet. Um I had thought for a really long time just cuz this is what my whole family did was that I was going to be in the army, but like the engineers sort of part. So I for a long time I thought like cool like traveling around and like building new structures to help people would be fun and then um my knowledge of that shifted so I abandoned that and then yeah I wanted to fix cars for a long time or for a while there I wasn't really sure what I was going to do until very late minute um and then I again whole hog to that <laughs> and it became everything. But so if you weren't I'm... doing this, you'd be doing everything else. Yeah, yes. you kind of. You kind of are still doing everything else. Also, yes. you just you just <laughs> also are really good at drawing. I just I like having like... hobbies to do, and I like nice. using me noggin for other things. <laughs> noggin. Me noggin. noggin. I just like having <laughs> like different interests. I think it makes you a a, a better and more interesting person to have lots of of stuff that you're interested in and not like yeah. all eggs in one basket not that that's anything wrong with it I, that's just my how i like to do it i say as someone who like does art kind of all the yeah. time now also gives you appreciation for the people I who think... do those those other things yeah as well. i think my non silly answer is that as a kid i was interested in animals so something animal related be an animal. Really liked, I wanted to become an animal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And then uh, before I got a job at BuzzFeed, I was really interested in working at like a card shop. <laughs> a card shop? Yeah. That's fun. Like Pokemon yeah. cards? Oh, <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> Obviously Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. But I always wanted to do art. And luckily I was able to just really commit to that path like early <laughs> and it worked out. Thank God. So <laughs> praise be, <laughs> but it's also hard to think hypotheticals because I had such a convoluted and highly specific career path that if I didn't end up in this exact scenario, I have no idea where I'd be. <laughs> yeah. I feel you there. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's the, the yeah, I don't know what I'd be doing for money during all that time. Yeah. I had like an internship lined up for at like a marketing firm doing like design work before I got the college humor job. So I'd probably be bouncing around 
taking design jobs while trying to be funny who knows how long i would have had the stomach for that before giving up <laughs> is the real answer i also briefly wanted to work um with helping uh deaf people navigate the hearing world but that that was very brief i think because then i got overwhelmed <laughs> I got over You didn't even want to navigate the hearing. I didn't want to navigate it. I still have a hard time. You know what? I kept thinking that I still have a hard time with it sometimes. So I was like, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Who am I to do this? Who do I think I am? Who do I think I am? Uh, do you want to slap a porf in here? Because we're out of time. Where do you yeah. want me to put this? Just make a little, Get porf, creative. little corner porf. Corner porf. You could even uh, make, a, make a new porf. Slap a if porf on me. I'm done. It. Because this this is a, a more finished piece than normally we're putting porfs in. So if you yeah. don't if you don't well, you want put it to on put a, the another layer, Nathan, yeah, so you can that just it's get you rid can of take it, later. it away. <laughs> it's called digital art, Dad. What? <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> oh, as, as like a side note, uh, when I talked to my dad this weekend, he was like, "I heard you talking about me on stream." Oh no. <laughs> I was like, wait, you remembered that we stream the one time that I was like talking shit. And he's like, yeah, I like EDM. Oh my <laughs> god! And I was like, oh my god! Electronic dad music. I can't believe. I think he missed the beginning where I was like really talking shit, but he did. He did hear me roast him a little bit. Don't say he could be listening right now. He never watches anything in full, so I'd be really surprised, but I guess I'll find out next weekend, won't I? <laughs> you but will. I, I, I hope he's not watching, I'll shit. be embarrassed again. No, he said it was okay. He was like, I can take anything that you say. <laughs> <laughs> Come at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dad wants, I'm an dad adult. wants to go. <laughs> I'm a man. <laughs> dad said, talk more shit, please. Yeah. <laughs> I can take it. That was a challenge to you <laughs> to talk more shit. <laughs> I love I you, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> I only talk shit because I'm so fond of you. <laughs> it's the fondness is clear in the shit talking. <laughs> but yeah, just so you know, yes, my dad was tuned in last week. Shout out to Karina's out. dad, wherever he may be. I mean, I know where he is. <laughs> but we don't. We don't. Yeah, yeah. He It'll could be, be. The rest of you. wherever he may be. Okay. <laughs> Who knows what patches of ice he's out sliding around on? I'm going to end the stream. It's We're time. We're going to end the stream. Uh, that was a fun uh, stream. Thanks Very for all cathartic. the questions, everybody. I hope yeah. it was nice to like hear us complain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you for all the questions, I hope everyone. You enjoyed listening yeah. to us complain as much as we enjoyed complaining. It's yeah, fun. it was nice. <laughs> uh, Just a we'll, little release valve, you know? There will be a new episode tomorrow. Yeah, and then, with, a, with a special guest. Yeah, and then we'll be back on Thursday for another stream. <laughs> yeah. And that's yep. it, right? And there will be another episode that Thursday as well. That's also true. Yes. Yep. Really Time just keeps on Thursdays. going. The content, <laughs> friends, we have the content for you. We're content creators. <laughs> and we'll give it to you, you know? for a price. Well, it's, it's, it's there. It's going to be there. All right, let's get out of here. Let's, let's yeah. skedaddle. <laughs> Goodbye. Sorry. We're sorry.